Ah, an inter an interesting card indeed. Hmm. But um, I'm going out. I'm going out with the card that I've been wanting to play the whole game. Okay. Nah, thanks to improvise, I happen to have seven mana to cast the Herald of Anguish. <laughs> I'm going to disallow that. <laughs> oh. counter, tar counter target spell. <laughs> Damn it. I want to use Herald of Anguish. I'm sorry, Gerda. It just, it's fine. It's a little too, a little too late. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, um, all right. So with that, uh, yeah, I'll end. Okay. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> okay. Let's draw a card. And, uh, so I didn't draw my win con the entire time. All right, I'm going to pay two, cast a Skyship Plunderer, who has Summoning Sickness this turn, so I can't use his awesome ability. I'm going to swing out for one, three, four, six. Mm, all right, and uh, because I am tapped out, I will take six, bring me down to negative three. All right, so that is the end of the match. Mm. All right, then. Now, do you want to go to extra game? Because I happen to notice that you I don't want to go to an extra game, but I do want to actually, you know... Uh, talk about what my deck actually wanted to do because wanted I, to I do. did to show off right. on, on each of the pieces of what my deck wants to do, but uh, yeah. they they didn't yeah. actually come together. Now, just as a commentary, because Gerda told me he's only running twenty two lands in his deck, which might yeah. explain why he opened the way he did on these past two games. That's why I offered an extra game to say, like, do you want a fair chance at just getting the ball rolling this time, but he has declined. No, game two, I actually got my ball rolling. I was, just, I just didn't have a critter in, in order to start it. No, that no, was no. You, you got mana choked. You went three turns without playing a land, and you only had three lands on the board. That's mana fuck. Eh, it's a bit mana fuck. To be perfectly honest, thanks, uh, thanks to the improvised triggers on um, on Herald of Anguish or other deck building choices I could have made, I uh, I honestly didn't really uh, I don't you don't really need all that much mana in this set, which is uh which is a thing I, w I want to uh, get into a bit later. Well, that's true. Yeah, ma mana is well, it's got a strong competitor now in the form of energy counters. All right, so. I want to show. Uh, I want to show off what this deck was um, was originally uh, in, intending intending to do because um, a, a lot of this stuff uh, a lot of this stuff got uh, got showed off thematically, but uh, not uh, but not actually um, as uh, as much as I uh, as as much as I oh I already pulled that one up, as much as I really wanted it to, um, and then there's this one and. Uh, is that it? Do I already have a hidden? Do I already have one of my hiddens out? No. I, uh, there's that and where? Yeah, hidden. Okay. Pops or arrest. There it is. Okay. So, what this deck um, honestly uh, does really well while I was draw testing, and I actually did a, a, a pretty significant amount of draw testing for me. I like draw tested like four games at 22 man. I didn't actually run into mana fuckery at all while I was doing draw testing, is that Hidden Stockpile on multiples is fucking absurd. Uh, it effectively makes it so that uh, as, lo as long as you, you know, get uh, any of the one drops in the set, like Implement of Malice or any of the, o or any of the other uh, uh, smaller implements, because there's a full cycle of implements, and yep. they're honestly pretty good. You can effect. You can effectively have infinite, uh, infinite scry as as you were actually showing off with uh, the Lightcrafter Bestiary. I like that card. It's a real uh, powerful The combo card, that you've yes. got with Lightcrafter Bestiary and a Watchful Automaton um, made it so that you could you know continuously dig for stuff. And the set in general really wants you to either well Simic specifically wants you to dig fucking uh, endlessly. Pretty much, yeah. In addition to having Drew or Cowl, you got the scries that just you pay mana and you get to control your top deck. Yes, it will help you get to your win condition that much more consistently. Yeah. But I didn't get um, to my win condition. <laughs> I mean, I won the game, but I didn't draw my fucking win con. No, what is your win con technically aside from Gontis? Because Gontis is actually uh, is actually an amazing win con. So my Aetherwind Basker was supposed to be my ultimate sink for all those energy counters that I was creating all game because you can pay any number of energy counters, put, it, put his ability on the stack as long as you have the energy counters to pay, and he will inflict trample damage on your opponent. Yeah, energy breathing. Ooh. Energy breathing. So that would and have been honestly, cool. Uh, uh, if, he was, if he wasn't a 7-drop... 
which is actually well, the, a big issue with a lot of the bombs in this set that are slightly <laughs> too expensive. It's why I went for Herald of Anguish because Improvise is actually really uh, really easy for me to to uh, to, uh, to resolve, assuming I get even a, even a single hidden stockpile out. So, mm. are you even running Renegade Map? I am not running Renegade, Renegade Map, and the reason I'm ru not running Renegade Map is because I wasn't having mana uh, mana fuckery issues the entire time I was draw testing. Like right. seriously, I could get I could get uh, to two or even four mana relatively easy as long as I at least open uh, at least open two or three. And yet during the games, that did not happen for me. Yeah, um, I'm using I'm using a lot of prison stuff, but the main reason why is because it takes me a little bit of time in order to build up either my servo count or my mana in order to hard cast a Herald of Anguish. But Herald of Anguish isn't the only thing that I have got going on in this deck. If if I get a double hidden stockpile going by about turn five or uh, between turn five and seven, I can have an entire army of server uh, servos going for inspiring war to ha for inspiring roar to happen. Right, and, right, right. And with the uh, other and with the uh, black automaton uh, that I didn't pull out that I was supposed to. Where are you? Uh, yeah, the augmenting automaton. Uh, it's more expensive shade breathing, but it's still good shade breathing. Well, yeah, if only it had, like, Trample or something. Yeah, but it's it's white-black. I don't get Trample. Yeah, um, I that's really true. like the the cycle of implements. These implements are fucking great. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're fun. I like it. They, they pay all... for themselves, and, and they debilitate your opponent in, so, in some way. Like, your blue one gives you double draw. The black one gets you uh, di uh, gets you discard and draw. The green one gets allows you to go tall with a draw. Tall I forget what draw. the red one does, but I think the red one's a bolt. Is the red one a bolt? Uh, let's check the deck list real quick. I is for so the implement of no, not ferocity. It's not improvement. It's combustion. Deal yeah. one damage to target player. Ooh, okay. So the red one's not that good, but it does allow yeah, you to trigger revolt a lot, and that's what this deck honestly was was supposed to do. Get out solemn recruit, trigger revolt every turn, and you know just make him make either him or herald of anguish really fucking big, and herald of anguish being relatively big when, when he comes out is is really nice too. Um, I was supposed to buy a bunch of time with Pacification Array. Didn't draw into it either game. I like I like that I at least got to attempt to cast Inspiring Roar, and then you countered it twice. <laughs> nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. Uh, what? But the big <laughs> the big way for me to actually trigger Revolt in this deck is to recast Conviction over and over again because it's stupid cheap, and I can return it to my hand whenever the fuck I want. Right, it's so right, nice. Right. Oh yeah, because when it leaves the battlefield, you get your revolt triggers off. That's clever. See that? That's yeah. a little new. That's a little application that I, I that would have escaped me. Yeah, convic uh, conviction is on is honestly a busted card with revolt. But I I needed critters and like I, that was the big issue for me because I was look I was looking through the Orzhov critter list and like a lot of the critters themselves are actually relatively underpowered for this set. Like. I know that uh, you just ran Golgari, which is why we're not running Golgari uh, this time around, but mm -hmm. Winding Constrictor is pretty objectively the best critter in the set. A 2-drop, uh, 2-3, oh and it doubles the amount of 1-1 one, one count, uh, one, one counters or any counters that you generate. It's fucking nuts. C O N. Winding Constrictor. If, yeah, one or, if, one or more, if one or more counters were to be placed on an artifact or creature you control, that many of those counters plus one are placed on that permanent instead. If you would get one or more <clears throat> energy counters, you get that many plus one. Yeah. I see. The Winding Constrictor is fucking nuts. And honestly, I... And honestly... What what this set honestly shows me is a little bit uh, is a little bit of cautionary tale, but not but not as cautionary as it really should have. Uh, Kaladesh is the first is the first block in which uh, fire testing. Well, I think it's fire testing that debuts in either Kaladesh or Origins, and um, the fire testing method was really interesting when it first started out because it was just straight up not working. Uh, the Kaladesh block is very, very power pushed, and it sets the and it sets the theme for the fol the following several sets. Because after Kaladesh, we get over to uh, the uh, Amonkhet block, and it, do we go to Amonkhet after? I think we go to Amonkhet after Kaladesh, and then after there we go. Uh, Dominaria was actually uh, was actually per was actually uh, relatively safe, but. Then after Dominaria, I think we went from Dominaria to either Eldraine or Kaldheim, and Eldraine was just pushed like nobody's fucking business. <laughs> uh, I don't think we've actually done Eldraine yet, right? No, it was we haven't done Eldraine. Uh, 
Yeah, because it, uh, it's still a bit too early for us, and those wounds are still raw. When we do Eldraine, we're not we're not allowed to play Oko, okay? Like everyone <laughs> everyone acknowledges that Oko is just fucking terribly bad for the format, and it, and in Magic in general. So nuts. Well, uh, that's, but that's a story coming, for coming time. back to Aether Revolt. I like this set. I do. I understand it's way too fucking power push, especially with uh, especially with uh, with the good stuff deck. And I and I recognize that a lot of the archetypes in here are uh, are a bit too powerful for uh, for it to be fun to play against. And yet, for our limited match, when we weren't actually running the supported colors, this was actually really fun for us. Cloud uh, Cloud got to show off a, a decently powerful archetype for Simic, where he gets to dig forever and count and counters my shit. It's not quite the it's not quite quite draw go because he's actually still playing on his turn, but you know it's effective. And I got to show off uh, why revolt is um, is an interesting keyword. It's not actually the best keyword, but it's pretty good. Yeah, um, I I agree. This this was a lot of fun um, and the subject and subjectively, but objectively. Um, Gerda and I are used to sets that usually lack the complements that it needs from the other sets in its in its corresponding block in order to really get its shit going. And but although that's true here, it's not true enough. It really isn't. I found that a lot of the complements that you needed in order to get your combos off were present in the set. Case in point, Baral Chief of Compliance gives you an ability that draws you cards every time you counter a spell. You got counter spells. It's a beautiful thing. They actually provided you the tools you need in order to get going. Mm -hmm. And no, the energy archetype isn't nearly as powerful in this <laughs> set as it was in uh, in Kaladesh, though. Well, that they did do a pretty good. Uh, Sync for energy counters, Gunty's Aether Heart, or um, there's even the Aeth uh, it's like the Aether Leopard or something, that you do have some pretty good, the Aether Stream Leopard, so you do get some pretty good uses for the energy counters that you produce. Now, Fogar um, Cub's in uh, Kaladesh, right? Uh, I can't say. Okay. Uh, I know we, Felidar Sovereign is here. Speaking of, no, we're not running Felidar Sovereign because <laughs> the uh, the missing piece of that infinite loop is in uh, Kaladesh. Yep, you see? If only, if only it had the compliment, but it doesn't. Mm. What you do All get right. is the Aether Sphere Harvester. Pay an energy counter to give it lifelink until end of turn. Uh, which Crew is one. nice, honestly, especially especially on a ro on a really powerful vehicle. I yep. know that Harvester was one of the uh, one was one of the key cards in uh, in uh, good stuff. I just, I'm just saying, like, just like in classic Magic the Gathering before they invented uh, energy counters, yeah, usually abilities that don't cost mana are pretty powerful, and you should really consider yeah. doubling down on those late game. Viscerous Seer, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so any other thoughts on this set, Mr. Cloud? Well, that I really wish that we could have gone to game three, but that's okay. I respect your decision. Um, I wanted, I wanted a you know a more even matchup, while we tried to make this as even as we could by both using underpowered and unsupported color combinations for this particular set. Um, I think I just think that Baral steals the cake for encouraging you to keep a lockdown on your opponent at all times. The earlier you get the lockdown started, your greater probability of winning. Mm. All right, then, everyone. This has been us exploring Aether Revolt. Tune in next time when it is Cloud's turn to pick out the set. My turn. It's going to be fun. Be safe, everybody. See ya.